Hi everyone, I'm the Coyote. Welcome to the fourth episode of L'Image Clé, the keyframe. It's gonna be the first one in English, uh, so if my English is not that fluent, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try my best to uh, translate everything for you so you can follow the tutorial. And uh, okay, let's go! Uh, let me um, explain you uh, quickly the concept of this series, if you uh, don't know uh, already it. Uh, it's quite simple, I'm gonna pick a YouTube channel of my choice and I'm gonna make a motion design introduction for this channel. And I'm go gonna show you all the process uh, from the beginning to the final render. So today we have the Chain Beer Motorsport Explained channel uh, run by uh, Stuart. And on this channel we're gonna find a lot of uh, explanations about uh, mostly uh, Formula 1. Uh, but all the motorsports also in general. Uh, it's very interesting because as I do a lot of uh, sim racing and I'm a Formula 1 enthusiast also, um, I can find there a lot of uh, very cool explanation about technical stuff, very complicated stuff about you know the tow process, the tow mechanics, the, such the, the differentials, there are also lots of uh, analysis about the the tracks and the rules and uh, it's very uh, well made uh, it's very schematics very simple to make the hard stuff easy to understand so uh, very cool stuff very cool stuff so what are the um, starting point that we have to uh, make a good introduction uh, first of all we have this uh, logo there which is the an actual bear head with those uh, little clutch, little gears to make the ears. The the nose, the mouth of the bear will be this uh, this wheel. Uh, we have the um, yellow background with the grid. We have a touch of purple, and uh, we have to stay. I think to be uh, we have to, to to stay coherent with the channel. We have to. Uh, make something like this really simple. No, we don't need some fancy stuff. No, no fancy plugin, 3D shading. No, we don't. We are, we are not gonna use that today. We're gonna use only the um, built-in uh, capacity of After Effects. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, I think I think that everything we need for that. So. Uh, what we're gonna do is just simply, you know, rebuild this and animate it. Alright, let's jump in After Effects and let's get it on. Let me get a little coffee. Alright, uh, first of all I'm gonna make a new composition. Composition, new composition. Uh, 1080p seems alright. Uh, 25 frames. Maybe, maybe uh, it's okay for now. Uh, let's get it full. And uh, I'm gonna go there, right click, new, solid. I want this solid to be uh, just like the yellow background we see we see previously. All right. And I'm gonna add a grid, a grid effect. So there you're gonna see my uh, After Effects is in English, is in French, sorry. So I'm gonna try as much as possible to give you the English terms to find the effects. So this one is grid. I want my grid uh, to be set with the width and eight, and it's gonna be five by five. And I want it to be the light green we saw also previously something like this and the border is gonna be uh, gonna have a thickness of one and the transfer mode is going to be normal so if I zoom in a little you can see the grid nice let me adjust that so you're gonna see everything and I'm gonna duplicate this grid this time it could be 100 by 100 and the thickness is going to be about um, yeah 2.93 something like this normal also uh, i don't want to the grid to be all over my layer so i'm gonna add 
a mask but only applying the mask on the effect so I bring up the properties there of my layer with the grid and if I scroll down there is this op composition option I'm just gonna first of all I'm gonna add a mask of course so there is the mask applying on the layer but not on the effect but if I scroll down there in the option of the grid uh, composition option we have a plus and a minus if I just click one time on the plus you know now we have the, the the mask applying only on the grid and we just need to do the same for the second grid all right now I'm gonna adjust a little my my masks with a little bit of feathering and maybe reducing it so I want just to have the, the the clean green on the edges so it's gonna be easier for Stuart if you want to use that to you know make some some kind of transition okay um, next we're going to use a lot of shape layer let me just rename quickly this layer to rename the layer just you just have to select it it's enter on the keyboard and rename it I'm gonna name it BG for background all right now shape layer right click new um, layer shape shape layer I don't know something like this and there I'm gonna add from here a polystar polystar should be this one if I just activate the masks is there you're gonna see the star I'm gonna bring up the properties of the layer shape like this I need 15 um, 15 side 15 uh, branches and okay let me check my uh, cheat cheat du, du, du. all right um, intern radius intern radius we need uh, one 15 outside radius we need one 26 and the intern round we need to 17 16 to 16 sorry and the outside uh, round we need 172 so what it does now you can see we have uh, some kind of a gear and we need to uh, fill it so I'm gonna add there in the properties on the the gray little gray arrow uh, fill all right now the fill is there I want it to be black right I'm gonna add one more ellipse and this one is going to be 200 for the size you can see it there now and I'm gonna add another one another ellipse and this time it's going to be let me check yeah 60 for the si for the size great now we just have to uh, invert some of those masks uh, yeah the first ellipse we just need to activate the inversion so now we have this empty part great let's rename this into uh, gear fill I'm gonna duplicate this one I'm gonna select my shape layer control D on the keyboard I'm gonna rename this one gear outlines outline I'm gonna deactivate the previous one and now we want the same but without the middle circle and we want just to see the outline just the the edges so for that it's quite simple I'm gonna bring up all the content of the the layer of the all the shapes I'm gonna remove the fill and I'm gonna remove the the middle ellipse all right and instead I'm gonna add the contours which is outlines those outlines I want them to be black and now if I remove the mask we can see the outline the black outlines and two for the thickness seems to be uh, appropriate all right
uh, we can reactivate the previous one. Now uh, we need the outer circle. Let me bring my screenshot. I did a screenshot of the logo, so you, co you can use this as a guide guideline. All right, so we have the hills. Uh, let's do this outer circle. So for that we're gonna use the same technique. Uh, we're gonna use a new layer, shape layer, and this time it's going to be I don't know yellow. No, yellow is my background, so maybe uh, not this one. Maybe, maybe not blue. Okay, let's have it green. And um, I'm gonna add an ellipse. All right. I'm gonna adjust the size of my shape layer to 936%, 936%, so a big one. And this time I'm gonna add, a f f f f no, I'm gonna add outlines. So now we can see the outline of the first shape. I want it to be black and I want the thickness of 10. 10? Mm, no, not 10. I think it's going to be 4. Yeah, 4 is better. Mm -mm -mm. And rename this layer mm, out circle. Great. Layer, later on, we are going to need this layer to use it, not as a scene layer, but as a mask. So I'm going to duplicate it one time, I'm gonna make it uh, fuchsia, pink, purple, just another color. Uh, this is going to be my mask and instead of the uh, outline, I want it this time to be uh, fill. Alright, we can lay it red like this, it's gonna be okay. Now we need to, let me bring back the, the beer. We have the outer circle, we have the ear. We have one ear, but we are, just have to duplicate the ears to have two of them, obviously. And we need to, to do this uh, center wheel. All right, so let's make a new uh, shape layer. This one is going to be cyan. Yeah, or maybe, maybe orange, do we have orange? Yes, orange. Orange is cool. Let's rename this as will. And again, we are going to add. You can add shapes on layer shapes from there or from there. It's the same choice, all right? It is just easier for me because it's closer from the working area. A little sip of coffee. Ah, I like this purple. My favorite cup. Cup? Teapot? No, I don't know. Yeah, I told you my English is not that good. Um, all right, let's add uh, one, two, um, three ellipses. Uh, yeah, three ellipses. Let's add three ellipses. One, two, three. Uh, let's add a fill. All right, uh, it's going to be black again. First ellipse. Uh, the size is going to be uh, five ninety-three. The second one is going to be um, eighty-six. And the last one is going to be 330. 330. 30? 30? Alright, uh, now I'm just gonna invert this. Uh, not this one, maybe this one. I don't remember, let me check. Uh, I'm gonna invert, yes, the last one. Let's solo this thing so we can see a little bit better what we are doing. Alright. I just invert the ellipse number three, and now I have my wheel. 
All right. Uh, on the content, I'm gonna reduce those shape. I'm gonna select all the four of them, and I'm gonna hit Control G on my keyboard to group them. All right. Now I'm gonna add another ellipse. This time it's going to be a size of mm, 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 five fifty. Five for uh, 455 sorry 455 and I'm gonna add um, an outline and I'm gonna I'm gonna select my apps my outline and again control G to put them in another group all right we have two groups now and nothing's changed it's just because we need to put this group above the first group and now we can see the outline um, this outline is going to be uh, uh, with a thickness of not 33 but 10 10 seems to be okay and uh, we need the uh, ends to be not squared but uh, round and now I'm gonna add a trim path trim pass uh, there I'm gonna set that to uh, 60 for the beginning for the start and 80 uh, 90 sorry for the end so now you can see we have just uh, a portion of this uh, path great I'm gonna now select my group too and duplicate it, Control D on the keyboard. And I'm gonna go to the trim pass and set the offset to 180, 180 degrees. So it's the on the opposite. And now, just to remove the white part, I'm gonna use a very, very uh, cheap effect I'm gonna go to uh, with my la layer selected I'm gonna go to effect uh, obsolete because it's in a very old effect and it's going to be the mask by color I'm gonna choose to remove the white I'm gonna rise up a little bit the tolerance and just a touch of smoothing so now you can see this part are now transparent and we have a whole wheel all right so now what uh, we need to do we need to place whole stuff on the on the to, to to have the actual layer so i'm gonna just get that a little down with the key uh, the arrow keys from the keyboard if you want to go faster you can hold shift <laughs> All right, this is going to be under everything else, and we need to get those hills to the right place. Maybe it's a little too big. Okay, let's have the ears a little bit bigger, so with the scale properties. Alright, I'm gonna duplicate my ears, group them, change the color uh, to the color that I don't use yet. Yeah. I'm gonna place the second hills, second here. All right. So now, if I deactivate the screenshot, we do have uh, the beer, and we just need to uh, make the chains between the wheels and the, the gears. All right, let's do that. 
um, for that I'm gonna need a new solid. This one is going to be, uh, I don't know, maybe green. I'm gonna lower the opacity, so for that I'm gonna select my my new solid. I hit T on my keyboard to bring the opacity properties. I'm gonna lower the, the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take my uh, mask tool, my feather tool, it's G for the shortcut on your keyboard. And I'm gonna trace a mask. Let's go for something like this. Maybe we can use the the guidelines. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be better with that. Let me redo that. No, I want to delete it. Uh, like this, like this. Mm, like this. Nope. Nope. All right, so we have the first one. Let's uh, make another one. Should start something like this. Something like this. All right. Now we do have our masks for the chains. Let's bring this under everything. And now we can adjust that uh, just a touch. So there it's going to be all right. And this, uh, it's the orange mask that needs to be a little more like this. All right. Uh, let's uh, deactivate the red one and now let's rename this chain chain one and I'm gonna use an effect that I'm quite sure Stuart is using a lot to do the videos uh, I have to correct that all right seems better I'm going to use the Vegas effect. So you just type Vegas there and you drop that to the layer. I'm going to set this to mask, mask one, segments. I want about 100 of them. Length one is going to be all right. I want them to be black and I want them to be transparent. All right, so now we can see the actual uh, lines there. I want them to be a little more knit. So I'm going to push this thing up to one. And for the width, uh, let me see. Yes, it's going to be about almost eight, I think. Yeah, seven and a half, something like this. And I'm just going to uh, duplicate this layer and set the second one to mask two. All right. All right, all right. Uh, the ears might need to be a little uh, upper. Yes. All right, you get the idea. I'm just going to show you the techniques. Uh, now I want to see only the outlines inside of the head of the beer. So remember we did a home mask previously, the red one. So 
I'm going to say to the field part of the ears to be uh, visible only outside of this mask. So I'm going to take my mask, I'm going to put it right above the gear fill and I'm going to set the gear fill to be alpha inverted. And there you can see now we have only the um, outlines inside. I'm going to do the same for the second ears. I'm going to duplicate the mask and set it to be alpha inverted. All right, so now we have something quite close of the original bearer there, okay. And we have a background, perfect. We need to now um, activate, animate, sorry, uh, a little bit those, those shape. So for that, we're going to use the... Um, slide ops controls and the um, size the size of the of the of all those shapes so for that i'm gonna bring uh first let me remove that i'm gonna bring a new effect layer i'm gonna rename this layer slider uh, slider control all right and there i'm gonna ask for um, a slider control, I think. So in French, it's glissier. Yes, for you in English, it should be a slider control. I'm going to drag that up to my um, layer effect panel. And then we just want to link the rotation properties of each element to this slider control. So for that, I'm going to select my wheel, type air on my keyboard to get the rotations. I'm going to, we don't need to animate this circle because we are not going to see anything even if it's rotating. But we need to animate the gears outline to the gears fill, the gears outline and the gear fill. And for the chain, I'm going to show you after how we can do that. So, and then I'm going to select my uh, layer, effect layer, and then I'm going to pick the, the snail right there, and I'm going to drag it to the slider control. And then you see the, the, the parameter going red, which means this is associated to the slider control. All right, let's keep going on. So this video is not going to be uh, two hours long and boring as. And for the chains, uh, if we go to Vegas, we can see it there. There is a rotation parameter. So I'm just going to do the same, but with this uh, rotation parameter from the effect and not from the uh, from the layer. All right. So now everything is linked to the to the sliders. Maybe we can. I just adjust that even more. Yeah. That's not the right one. All right. And uh, now we have everything linked to the slider control. So if we move this slider, everything should be rotating in the same. Uh, we have something not working there. It means I forgot one layer. Yeah. I forgot.
There is one not rotating. I don't know which one. And gear field. No, it's the this one. This one. All right, so now we have everything linked to the slider control. Everything is rotating at the same path, the chains, the um, the wheel and all the gears. Perfect. So I'm going to um, set a keyframe for this slider control. So I'm going to set that to zero uh, for the beginning. I'm going to click on the stopwatch there so you can see if I hit you on the keyboard with this uh, with this layer selected. The keyframe is there and I'm going to go about five seconds later and I'm going to set that to 3000. And I'm going to right click on the last keyframe. Uh, I'm going to do keyframe assistant and uh, smooth, uh, smoothing the uh, approach, the end, something like this. Uh, you can also hit F9 on your keyboard to do that. All right. Now uh, let's uh, animate this. Animate the animate in the size of the shapes. So for that, I'm gonna have all of that selected. I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard to bring the scale properties. I'm gonna set a keyframe for each of the layers. I'm gonna go about six frame after the beginning and set everything to zero. All right. And now I know I want my, uh, I don't want my chain to be animated with the side. I'm going to animate with something else. Uh, I want my uh, wheel and my auto circles and mask to be first and gears. So the ears, I want them to appear a little bit later. So I'm going to select them and I'm going to drag them a little further so they appear after. I'm going to have my gears outline also to be a little delay. So let's check that. We have, we have the, the chain for now. Let me reduce that quality so, can wait, so we can work faster. So we have first the wheel, then the outer circle, then the ears in two separate times and about there I'm gonna animate in the chains chains and uh, for that I'm gonna use the thickness I guess uh, yes thickness there I'm gonna uh, add a keyframe and for this one also let's bring up those keyframes by hitting you on the keyboard and I'm gonna make them start to uh, zero. I can do that. All right, no problem. So, what can we uh, animate? Mm -hmm -hmm. Maybe the lengths. All right, let's try with the lengths. So, there is gonna be one, one. All right, and if they are zero lengths, we can see that. All right, now they are appearing. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now let's keep going on. Reduce everything. Um, I'm going to select everything but the background. I'm going to layer and pre-compose. This is going to be the bear. And from uh, there, we just have to, uh, you know, put a little magic with the camera, a little slight zooming, a few lights, and it's going to be perfect. So for that, I'm going to uh, put those two layers as 3D layers. I'm going to slightly increase the size of the background, and I'm going to uh, push it a little bit forward, just a, just a touch. And then I'm going to add a new light, a point light, white one, uh, very low intensity. 
and uh, the very low intensity for the shadows also and I'm gonna put it a little upper I'm gonna duplicate that that light so we can have a little more fill with the light and I don't want my background to interact with the light so as you can see there is only uh, this a little brighter area is there it's just because the yeah everything is 3d now and so it's uh, interacting with the light so we don't want that we want uh, we want to go to the background to the option surface and uh, using the light no you don't use the light you accept the shadows and you mr. beer there you are gonna have shadows so you are going to play with the light and you are going to project a shadow. All right, so now we can see the very light shadow on the background. This bear is way, way, way too big. So let's reduce that. All right, better now, maybe too big. And now we are going to animate the position and the scale of the bear so uh, about about there when the bear is uh, fully uh, completed maybe a little before I'm gonna set a keyframe for the position and the scale and we are going to uh, move the bear on the left so for that I'm gonna activate the title and action security which are those uh, guidelines of there and I'm gonna put my bear with the selection tool a little bit on the left and reduce the size significantly. Yes, about that. Um, mm, mm, mm. We also need to adjust as we put the the, the background in 3D. Now the, the the mask is way too big, so we need to adjust this this mask quickly. Mm -mm -mm. All right, uh, we can also uh, ease the uh, end of the movement of the bear again right click uh, key assistant and is the end right I'm gonna add um, I'm gonna add just first the the background is too far away because the you know the the, the shadow is um, have too much distance with the with the bear so I'm gonna just bring back the, the background a little all right now I'm gonna add a new camera, so right click, new camera, 25 millimeters, okay. Uh, let's make sure that the um, depth of field in the camera option is not activated. We don't need that there, we need to be focused. And I'm gonna add a slight zoom in, so for that I'm gonna bring the position properties of the camera I'm gonna set up a camera, uh, a keyframe there at the beginning. I'm gonna use the C key on my keyboard to use the um, tool camera tool. I'm gonna slightly de-zoom for the starting point and at about five seconds, I want to be a little closer, just a touch. All right, same again, uh, right click on the last keyframe and is the uh, approach now we just need to add the text so I'm gonna right click again new text and I have that um, chain oh it's the motorsports first oh, let's go for the main title chain beer and uh, I have found this, tab, this uh, font, which is Typograph Pro. I'm quite uh, sure you can find it easily. I want it to be extra bold. I want it a little, just a little bigger. 
I'm gonna set this to be 3D also. And I also want uh, my shadow to appear behind the text. So I'm gonna activate the uh, shadow option. Um, and then I want to animate this in the same time as the beer. So it's gonna start this text from the left about there. So I'm gonna bring the position properties and when the bear is going to the left, the text is going to be set on the right. Something like this. Here again, same stuff, easy, easing, easing the approach. And I'm just going to activate also an animation properties for the text for the opacity. So for that, I'm going to the animation there. And I think we are going to play with, uh, let me say, we have to set the opacity to zero. And we have to play with the, yes, with the end properties. So I'm gonna activate the stopwatch there. I'm gonna set that to 0% at the end. And if I hit U again, I have all my keyframe of the layer. I'm going back to the previous position and I'm gonna set that to 100%. And now it should be appearing alongside the letter and when the, the barrier is going to move to move on the left. All right, that's the ID. Um, we need the motorsport stuff also. So let me show you a quick cool stuff there. I'm gonna type motorsports. Uh, I think it's explained after. I'm gonna set that to um, <laughs> not extra ball but light, and it's going to be. way smaller and if I move my text now to be under it's not gonna change the position it's gonna change the keyframe because you remember we have the keyframe for the position for the text but if I select both of my uh, keyframe and get my cursor right on one of those keyframe and I move now my text everything is coming uh, along all right, and now I have also the same animation on my text. Uh, this one can be slightly coming slightly later. I think it have to move faster, so maybe bring this a little bit more on the right. Uh, get it a little smaller again. So I don't want my text to appear inside inside the bear. All right, what else do we need now? Uh, we can remove this. Um, 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 uh, ah, yeah, yeah. We need the uh, touch of purple, so for that, it's gonna be quite easy. I'm gonna duplicate the background. I'm gonna remove uh, my grids effect and the mask. And uh, I'm gonna lower the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna rename that purple line. And I'm gonna take my mask tool, feather tool. I'm gonna, with this layer selected, I'm gonna draw a nice curve like this. So 
something like this. And now I'm going to add a stroke effect. I think it's that in English. Uh, stroke or line. It's going to be, uh, again, it's going to be under generate. Sorry about that. Uh, effect, generate. And there you should have something like stroke or line. And the plugin should look like this. And uh, let me check the color for that. Yes, it's this color. We want the same purple is using and uh, the thickness of two i think it's going to be cool the opacity and the stiffness you can raise up that and uh, don't forget to bring back the opacity of the layer to 100 percent all right and we want it not uh, original but transparent so we can see the grid um Bring back again. Yeah, I put the, the background way too far. Yeah, now it's more subtle with the, the the light shadows behind. Yeah, everything has to be really, really um, simple. Uh, where is my line? Why does it not appear? Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's because it's behind my background now because I, I moved it. So it's a 14. And now, beam, magic. Background, everything's working. Um, let's animate this line. Uh, we just have to, uh, you know, couple of keyframes for the end of the, of the line. Uh, we want it to be done a little before the end of everything moving. And again, keyframe assistant is the approach. All right. Uh, last thing I forgot to mention. I'm going back to the beer composition and I'm going to have to activate a little bit of motion blur. So, yeah, uh, we want this to have motion blur, this, no, this, this, uh, this doesn't need this one, yes, and we activate the motion blur there also, and for the beer comp, so now what it, when it's going to be moving and rotating, we're going to have some, some motion blur, we can, whoops, sorry, uh, we can use that also on the, on, on the, on the, on the text great uh, it needs uh, some adjustment that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna show you now the uh, final render all right I just did few adjustments with my uh, text keyframe so it appears when I want and I also adjust the size uh, just a couple of few things uh, that I didn't show in the tutorial because I don't want it to be uh, two hours long. Um, so that's it. That's uh, that was a cool one. I think it's uh, coherent for the Chain Beer channel. Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, funny thing uh, is, I think we use a lot of the tool that Stuart is using himself to produce his video. Um, so yeah, cool stuff. I I, I think now uh, viewing this video, you know also how uh, how much work uh, is necessary to produce this kind of stuff. Stuart, if you're watching this, you are more than welcome to use that. Uh, and if you uh, help me and talk about my channel on yours. That will be very, uh, very nice of you because basically for the moment I'm thinking I just talking to myself. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for watching and I'm gonna see you soon Space Cowboys. Bye bye.